morning and welcome to an all new Eye of the Tiger. I'm Kia Madrano. And I'm Jaden Miller. The decision to widen class prerequisite options for A-Push has caused doubt among some students and teachers. AP Human Geography is more widely being considered by students as a possible direct pathway to AP U.S. History over other courses. According to Avery Beebe, an AP U.S. History teacher, AP Human Geo lacks certain curriculum standards necessary to understand the class. AP Human Geo is a good um, social science elective, but it doesn't necessarily follow the um, content and skills standards that are kind of needed in AP US and even in an extent in um, CP US and CP Gov Econ. Junior Miles Judd took AP Human Geo in his sophomore year, so he's personally aware of the difficulties of integrating into APUSH. There are some things um, I think that in AP Euro they might have a better background on. Um, I think that students that were in AP Euro are a little more prepared um, because of the essay questions, they already know how to write those, and um, just a different background. AP Human Geo teacher Mark Andriotta acknowledges that AP Human Geo is less effective in preparing students for APUSH. AP Human Geography um, doesn't directly prepare students for AP U.S. History. AP Euro is a much better preparation for kids wanting to take AP U.S. And actually we point that out to students, uh, freshmen, when we have our AP night, that if they're going to continue on the AP track, it's better for them to take AP Euro if they're going to go into AP US in terms of a skill set. AP Euro teacher Carol Crabtree is very familiar with APUSH as both classes experience a large overlap in structures and curriculums. Both AP US and AP European History share basically the same test format. The tests are identical in both classes. So we, we actually work together to make sure that we are teaching students in AP Euro the skills that they need to succeed on the AP European History exam, but also the AP US exam. The content is different, but this, the tests are the same. So there's a lot of skill instruction that goes into um, AP European History that students will use when they get to AP US History. For more information, you can read the full story in yesterday's print edition of Eye of the Tiger. We now go to Kale Gibson for sports. Good morning and welcome to this Tuesday's edition of EOTSN, I'm Kale Gibson. After falling to the Yuba City Honkers in the final seconds of the first round of playoffs, boys varsity basketball has turned a corner and is tearing it up on the court. With a record of 16-6 overall and 6-3 and in league, the team is in prime position to compete in playoffs. The varsity boys basketball team is having a phenomenal season as the team is currently in third place in the CVC. Third year varsity basketball player Joe Srincioni believes that the future is uncertain and that the team needs to do their part. We're right in the thick of things. Um, anything can happen these next two weeks. So we just got to do our part and just get all the wins we can to try to make a push for the league championship. Senior Jack Visger believes that the win against Whitney was huge and believes that it has motivated the team to keep on winning. It's like a big boost of confidence for us because we had them the first time we played them, but we just couldn't finish that game. So um, this game we played really strong from the start to the finish, and it really just shows us like how well we really can play when we're like all um, just like putting it all out, all out there. Visger believes that the rest of the season is tough, but is sure that the team has a good shot of winning the championship. We have to win out for the rest of the season, um, which is very doable for us. This week we have three away games, which is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, we're playing Consumeness, Antelope, and Oakmont, and um, so this is a pretty big week for us. Um, but yeah, we do have a good shot of winning league, though. The boys would go on to defeat the Whitney Wildcats with a score of 80-62. to 62. The boys will play the Consumers Oaks Wolfpack at 7 at Consumers Oaks High School. In other sports news, the Varsity Girls basketball team fell to the Wildcats with a score of 59-54, to 54, making their overall record 15-7 and, and pushing their league record to 5-4 and, and will play the Wolfpack at home tonight at 7. Varsity Boys Soccer took on the Antelope Titans on Friday night. The team would go on to win with two goals to none. And that's it on your home for Roseville High School Sports Top Plays Breakdowns and more. I have the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. Now we go to Gabby with entertainment. Thanks, Kale. Living in California, we've all been haunted by the legend of the Winchester Mystery Mansion, and recently it was brought to life on screen in a rather disappointing manner. 
In its entirety, Winchester was lackluster and unimpactful with no real purpose or value. The storyline was completely fabricated with no historic value and it still managed to be boring. Everything is generic and cliche, from the creepy ghost butler rattling furniture to the milky-eyed possessed demon child, and even these base level scares are presented in an unintriguing manner. They hint at a jump scare about five minutes before it actually happens in an attempt to build a feeling of unbearable suspense, but by the time it occurred, I had already prepared myself leaving me unfazed and disappointed. All the characters lag and add virtually nothing to the storyline and really only act as props for possession and any tragic backstory is lamely presented and used strictly for explanation. But despite all of this, I was willing to watch Winchester and tolerate the feeling of utter boredom for Helen Mirren's portrayal of a regal and intriguing Sarah Winchester. Mirren has a creepy air to her, perfect for a legendary crazy woman controlled by superstition. But even that stellar performance couldn't keep me from feeling as if I had wasted a precious 90 minutes of my life. Now we go back to news. Thanks, Gabby. Freshman Owen Young is set on fulfilling his dreams of competing on the TV show American Ninja Warrior. Freshman Owen Young is currently training to be a contestant on American Ninja Warrior, a high-intensity show that combines the toughest elements of gymnastics and obstacle courses. I just saw people do it and I wanted to be able to do it because I used to do gymnastics and a bunch of other sports and I saw that one and it like intrigued me because it was unique and I wanted to like test myself to see if I was able to do it. Friend Adam Marfel thinks Young's pursuit of his goal could help lead to other opportunities and perhaps recognition. It could help his reputation if he wants to get known um, and helps him physically too. Maybe a boost like uh, morale too, I guess, if he gets better at it. Young started training last July at Studio Martial Arts and Fitness with an intense regimen. We're here to hang. It's a lot of hanging and upper body strength more than lower body, but it's awesome. Young will continue his training until he reaches the minimum age requirement to enter the show. Sophomore Cassidy Noonan's recent visit to Kosumnis Oaks High School for an FBLA conference led to an unexpected showcase of her singing talents. There's no star in heaven that we can reach. The vice principal was stalling and <laughs> get out uh, killing time and nobody was really paying attention. We were all really bored and trying to have him say the awards and then all of a sudden he pulls the Starbucks gift card out of his pocket and suddenly everyone was paying attention. And he said that he would give it to whoever would sing at the in front at the podium. And so um, basically all of the Roseville FBLA looked at me and they were like, go, go, go. I wasn't really feeling anything except for like my heart pounding. <laughs> I was just kind of like excited, but I was also really nervous. And half of me was like, this is going to be awesome. And the other half of me was like, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> she also placed first in the public speaking portion of the conference. Today's a minimum day and students will be released at 12.10 due to High School on the Hill night tonight. Incoming freshmen will gather in the gym from 6 to 8 p.m. to learn about RHS electives, clubs, and programs. And that's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.